G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, in previous videos you would have seen some of my taps and dies I've got, and I've got a few sets of these these ones like in this sort of layout, which are the original, made in Japan, the original uh, budget tap and die sets from 40 years ago, which I got when I was in my late teens. So I've had them like 40 years, and they've been fantastic. I got a metric set and I got an imperial set. This is the metric. And as you can see, if we open her up, they've done a lot of use, a lot of work, and a lot of the taps are broken because this set is carbon steel, as you can see, right? It's not, it wasn't a high speed steel set. Carbon's okay, you know, if only doing occasional tapping, it's okay. And none of the dies are broken and they've been okay. But of course, it's not a patch on high speed steel so as they broke I replaced them with high speed steel anyway I broke a, an M4 the other day that one there so I had to get another that was already a replacement so I had to get another M4 so I got a couple now if you ever break taps like both of these have been broken that's a carbon steel one and that's a high speed steel don't throw the bits away all you got to do is grind them back, put a bit of a chamfer on them and you can use them as a plug tap. And the plug tap is where you tap through with a, an intermediate or a, you know, a tap with a taper on the end like these regular ones have. And you can't get the bottom of, the, of a blind hole so you can use a plug tap. So yeah, turn your old broken taps into plug taps and get some more life out of them. Anyway, I'm diverging. I had to buy another M4 in high speed steel so I bought two, and I got them from Banggood, and they were cheap. I mean, it, whereas the local tool man would charge like $10 a tap, at least, for high-speed steel. I got these from Banggood for $1.30 each, $1.30. And I've used a lot of Chinese taps over the years. A lot of these replacements are Chinese. Some of them are uh, local good brands like Sutton, you know, respected brands. But of course you pay a lot for them and, and having used the Chinese high speed steel, they work fine. I've really had very, very few problems with any of them. They've been great. They're certainly better than the carbon steel for sure. But, uh, you know, yep, the Chinese taps have been good. Now these are Japanese, as I said, Japanese set. So anyway, I ordered these, uh, these M4s. And when I was on the side, I was just sort of poking around there I've been laid up with a cold and I sound a bit husky probably. I'm just getting over it. And uh, anyway, I was looking on a site and blow me down, there was something there which I just thought was quite incredible. When you consider that the, the M4 ones from Banggood, high speed steel, cost $1.30 Australian each, I'll show you what is on there and which they ultimately sent me for a review. And uh, I think it's a phenomenal value, really. So I'll put them on the on the apron, and we can have a look at them. Well, this is it. Comes in a little packet. Quite a good looking tea piece, a tap holder. I mean, in the in the write up, it says it's a ratchet tap holder, and it had me a bit puzzled. I thought, oh, that'd be interesting, but it's not. It's a, you can see straight away it's just a standard collet type tea piece. There's a crossbar, and then you get five taps in metric from M3 up to M8. You get all this, so you get five taps and the tap holder for the princely sum of five dollars Australian. Five dollars Australian. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, if you if you forget about the T piece, that works out at a dollar a tap, basically, which is cheaper than the other ones I got already ordered and received from Banggood. Now, in the write-up, they say alloy steel. They don't say high-speed steel, but high-speed steel is an alloy steel, and they're definitely not um, high-carbon steel. Just you know, just a normal carbon-type tap. It's because they are black. You know, they basically generally are a black tap um, because of the, of the way they finish them, you know, the metal underneath will wear through to shiny but basically there's a big difference in looking at them and 
looking at these, yeah, you've got to say they look like high speed steel to me. Now let's take them out the, the bag and have a look at them. Now initially they look like quite a good quality product and I haven't had a close look at these yet but certainly they do look like high speed steel and the thread form on them is very nicely done. It's certainly as good as any of the other Chinese taps or even the local you know, quality taps I've bought. They look very well made and well it really comes down to value for money how they perform. Now the sizes go M8, M6, M5, M4, M3. You don't get an M7 but M7 is a bit of an unusual size. Not many people use M7s in, in stuff. So they've actually given you quite a good set of small taps suitable for model making and repairing small things. I'll come in close and we'll look at the, the thread form. As you can see they look pretty damn good. They're nice and uniform, they're clean, no burrs. They all look the same. They're an intermediate finish or end on them so basically they start well. It's the same as you would get with a, one of those little sets like I showed you previously. So uh, they're suitable for Starting off a hole, this one's a little bit less than intermediate, but it would do the job. This is definitely intermediate, so is that one, and that one, and that one. So yeah, I like what I see so far, they look good. Now the T-piece looks pretty much as you'd expect to find, and it's just a, a collet, collet chuck, quite well made, looks pretty uniform. Three forms okay. And it's a little bit bigger than the ones you get in the sets, which is a good thing because the ones in the sets are really too small. And while this is quite well done, there's one thing about these uh, tea chucks that I really don't like. And I'll pan out and I'll show you. Now for hand tapping, and we'll just talk about hand tapping with this video because Tapping it in, in a lathe is a different proposition. We're just going to look at what they've given us, and that's for hand tapping. Okay. Now, if you're hand tapping, you can use a, a T type tapping chuck, which is like that. Or you can use this sort, which are a lot better, way better, because you can hold it on, on each end. You've got total control on the axis, horizontal and also vertical you can and you can get good leverage, good feel on it. These I don't really like because for a start you're pulling off centre with them the way they are designed in this configuration. Now the bar should be actually dead centre but they're all like this in these kits or these cheap, these cheap sets and of course if you try and use it like that it's going to, the bar is going to slide all around the place. I've got one which I'll show you which is a, a good quality one and you can see that that has a that has a fixed crossbar. It's P and N, very very good, very very good brand. You've got total control and you can apply it equal uniform leverage, you've got much less chance of breaking a tap, you can hold it with one hand and turn with the other. So you really want a fixed crossbar. So these things I just, yeah, I, I really don't like them. Okay, so you would say well Rob's given that a negative. Well yes I have but as I said they're all, all the little ones are like this. But looking at this, I think you could actually improve this. You could actually do a quick modification on this and at the same time if we can find out 
just how good these taps really are because this is a type of spring steel. Now, ideally, you would stop that bar moving and one way to do it is to drill a hole in through the end, tap a thread through, use a little allen-headed bolt and that will just push the pinch down on the bar and keep it in whichever position you want to put it. You could even put a longer bar in if you want to. Here's a bit of steel from a bubble jet printer. It's a printer rail and it's, it's the exact size to go through the, the hole. It's pretty identical to this and it's quite strong stuff. It's stainless steel. So you could cut a bit of that off, make it slightly longer so it matches the length of the, the, of the PNN, which is perfect. Give yourself more finger room. All you could do is cut it, grind it, and you could feed it through and use it as it is. Or, you, as I said, we could try and lock the bar in position by drilling and tapping through the metal. Now, how successful that's going to be is it remains to be seen because this could be really hard stuff. As I said, it's springy. We don't know for sure that actually we can tap a thread in that. But anyway, let's try it, eh? Let's, let's drill a hole, tap a thread, try and tap a thread, and we'll use the set of taps that they've given us with this thing in the set to see whether they can actually tap their own big brother. OK, let's do it. OK, to do this, we're just going to take that end off. And we're going to put the, the centre bit in a collet in the old Shorblin and drill through with suitable size drill for a 4mm thread. Now using the shovel it may or may not be a good idea because drilling and tapping on the lathe it's more difficult to turn the spindle around on the shovel than it is on the Chinese lathe because uh, you can get belt slippage. So a Chinese lathe would be easier but as it's only a, a four mil thread um, we might be okay so we'll give it a go if it doesn't work out we'll, we'll We'll either do it by hand in the vice, or we'll use the Chinese. I think we'll get by anyway, so. Put our collet in. Lock her up and we'll be good to go with a bit of oil. Once again, this is where it's handy having two layers. You can just have an old one, you know, or one that's basic, like this one. And you can leave it set up with collars all the time. Good to go. Now, whenever I drill an end, whether it's faced or not, I mean facing it is the best way to go for accuracy. In this case it has been faced in production and we'll leave it so we don't destroy the chrome finish. But if you were to try and just drill that with a, a long drill, the chances are it almost, it almost certainly will skid offline and the drill will shoot all over the place. So you always spot the, the centre with a centre drill or a stub drill. And by doing that you can give the, the proper drill a point to locate it and it, even though it might be long and whippy it won't run off because it will find that that depression and it will follow it right through and it will drill a straight hole. So yeah always spot your, your uh, ends of your jobs and that way you've got a lot, lot more chance of getting an accurate centered hole. All right, we'll do it. Now 
Now it seems to drill okay, so we should be, should be able to tap this all right. That's all you need. We'll cut it dry because I don't like to risk work hardening metal. Go slow, I'm on the slowest lathe speed, and go dry. If you put on lube intermittently, the metal's going to go from hot to cold, hot to cold, hot to cold. And as soon as that happens, it will almost certainly work harden if it's got a very high carbon content. Now this is slightly springy, this is a sort of spring steel, but it's drilling okay. So we uh, keep the temperatures constant and it'll be okay. But I've seen too many people burn up drills when they work hard on the job, particularly stainless steel, that's notorious for that happening. Alright, we're through. So that drilled pretty good. So I think tapping it should be pretty easy. I don't expect any problems at all. Okay, for the sake of simplicity, we'll tap the drilled hole with its own tap. We'll do it in the vise. I'll use one of these holders because this is the way to do it for the best accuracy. And we will hold the work in some aluminium jaws to prevent any damage or marking. So we'll put them in the, in the vise and get on with the job. Put a bit of lube on. So we'll find out whether these taps are any good or not. I expect they'll be quite okay. You see how you can get your hand positioned on this and get everything lined up squarely and correctly. These are the best option for tapping threads if you're doing it by hand. Uh, no worries, these go through it like hot knife through butter. Now the beauty of high speed steel too is if there's binding or they're not going through the drill holes too small, you'll see the flutes flex on the straight taps like these. You can use spiral taps. I have got some spiral taps but I always use straight flute taps because yes you can see any flex that's occurring. You can, I mean I obviously you'll feel it but these will flex whereas carbon steel will just get to a point and just snap. Very unlikely to actually give much feedback on flex but uh, to each their own certainly this is doing it pretty easy once again when you use small taps you know you've got to be extra careful because you can break them a lot easier than the bigger taps and it's all doable up to three mil. I, I like to work three mil. Once you get below three millimeters in bolts, well then things get pretty, pretty damn hairy. You know, three mil is not too bad, but two mil, woo -hoo -hoo -hoo, no thank you. I stay right away from that. Yeah, beautiful. Pretty amazing value when you think of it. I mean, it's it's incredible just the stuff you can get for your money these days. And I mean, I've got you know quite a few taps and dies and yeah, for that sort of money, how can you how can you go wrong? It's incredible. All right. Now 
I did try the other another M4 tap in it to see if it was any tighter or looser and it actually went through the same. So this is coming in nicely. It always pays to compare one tap against another. If you put a tap through and you find that the bolt's a bit tight or, or a bit loose, just put another tap through the same size of a different brand and just see how they compare and sometimes you'll find that the tap will be tight or loose as well. Now that for a fix then. Eh? It won't get in your way and you can use it as you want to. So yeah, the thread the thread tap did a good job, it went through this springy steel. No sweat. And we've modified it in the process. Well there you go guys, what more can I say? It's uh, it's a bargain. I think it's an absolute bargain. I mean the taps are definitely high speed steel. It is an alloy steel and you know the description says alloy steel but I mean it really is high speed steel. The T piece is not a ratchet type T piece. I've never seen a ratchet type T piece and I was trying to think think to myself how the hell would you reverse direction if it's got a ratchet on it? And the more I looked at it I thought no nah, it can't be it looks like a normal one to me and it is it's just a normal T piece the same as you get with any sets. But it's quite a well made one it's good no flaws and the threads and all that are good and yeah, quite good. A little bit heavier than a lot of them too. Now the chuck on this, the collet chuck, is the typical setup where it takes the larger end and it will take the smaller end as well. The large end goes into the outside section of it and the smaller ends go right back into the centre. So it's like a stepped arrangement. They're all like that. So yeah, if you've uh, got different sizes in the ends of the taps well that's how you deal with it but overall I think it's marvellous really good value and I mean five dollars Australian for all this good quality convert to the US at three dollars forty I mean that's like potato chip money isn't it so yeah it's never been cheaper and easier to stock up your workshop these days and for home use these are perfectly okay Okay, let's look at a couple of screen grabs of the write-up on these. And in the video description you'll see a link to this particular item. And yeah, I'm always on the lookout for bargains for my viewers, what I consider to be bargains, and the ratchet thing sort of had me a bit intrigued, but I thought, nah, I can't imagine that. How would you undo it if it was a ratchet? You know, surely that just wouldn't be workable. But, but no, it's not. But yeah, it's a nice little unit. Once you do the mod, it's, it's good. And of course, you can extend the, the T-piece bar with a bit of stainless steel rod and as I said this is printer rail out of a bubble jet printer couldn't be any simpler it's the exact right size to go through how arsy is that okay well, that's it from me I hope you enjoyed it and uh, yep until next time see you around cheers